prophetic word of God over our life this season is mighty. He said, Giants are rising, and you are one of them. But the vehicle of the next level of God is found in the word of God. And therefore, this morning, I want to encourage every one of us, those that are right here in this service at Home of Refuge, those that are watching across the world, that it is important that you pay attention to the word of God this morning so that you can be able to enter into the new season that God has ordained for you. The Lord said to us that is a is the is, is for us is a year of irresistible faith. The kind of faith that is required to be able to make the impossibility to become possible. Now there are some of you that are here hearing my voice this morning. In the next one year, your life is going to be a living wonder. You are among that, let your image be like thunder. And what will make your life to be a living wonder is the word of God. I told us last week that the word of God is raw material. And every manufacturer needs a raw material to produce. The word of God is raw material. For example, cassava is the raw material for gari. You can't produce gari without getting cassava. The same way there are things that we desire in our destiny that it is impossible for them to become a reality except we are able to first receive the word of God. Therefore, anything the matter of God says, it is the word of God that you catch that will be able to carry you into the fulfillment. I say that again. If God says, I'm about to make you the head, it is that word that you receive that will become the raw material that will take you to that place of rulership. Therefore, it is very important that we pay attention to the word of God. So that we do not just hear what God wants to do, but so that we will be able to hear what we are supposed to do. Are you following me this morning? Are you following me this morning? It's very important that we pay attention so that we do not just hear what God wants to do. Man of God heard what God said. He said this, the new year we have entered as a ministry of prophetic year is going to be a year of the wealth transfer. Glory to God. I'm going to walk in wealth transfer. That's not all. You need to open your ears so that you can hear the step-by-step -step instruction that will bring you into that place of that prophecy. Am I making sense now? If we do not do that, it will look as if the prophecy of God is a lie. Yes. It will look as if the prophecy of God is a lie. For example, let me break it down in the language of men. I see you becoming a medical doctor in the next eight years. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. But you need to get these instructions. Go and make sure you write down so that you can get admission to study medicine. Is it making sense? The prophecy is where it's taking you to. The word of God is what will navigate you to that prophecy. Otherwise, we are going to carry every prophecies but little results. Because the word that is supposed to furnish us into the fulfillment of that prophecy, we are not patient enough to hear it. Therefore, this morning, be patient. What did I say? You need to be patient and you need to be attentive so that you can receive the word of God. I can assure you, every word you hear on this altar in the next one year, they are not man-made words. They are words from God that is designed by God so that our prophecy for this year will become a reality. If you miss the word, you miss the prophecy. This morning, I want to share with us on faith is a spiritual force. That's my message. Faith is a spiritual force. Can you say that with me? Say faith. Talk to me now. Say faith is a spiritual force. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try my best to break down some very vital foundations that we are going to need for the next couple of weeks this morning. Please, I'd like you to pay attention. If you really pay attention to the word of God this morning, you really pay attention to the things I'm going to teach. When I begin to go into higher things on faith in the next few weeks, you will not be lost. Yes, yes. 
Yes. It's like the ABCs that will make you understand the two letter words and the TV letter words. That's what I want to do this morning. If you pay attention, when I go into higher dimensions of faith, in the midst of the coming weeks, you are, you are going to be able to fully understand. Faith is a spiritual force. I'm going to try this morning to answer four questions. Where can we find faith? What is not faith? What produces faith? And then, why is faith a spiritual force? I'm going to be looking at where can we find faith? What is not faith? What produces faith? Why is faith a spiritual force? Let me remind you of a story I shared with you last week. Maybe that is going to help you to why I want to do what I'm going to do this time. For me, in the 2020, and he said to me, say, son, you are due for your next level. He said, but the faith that you possess at the moment will not be enough to power your next level. Now you have to invest in your faith so that you can catch up with the move of God. Sir, no matter how hard a four-year-old child tries, he cannot carry a bag of cement, two of us. He cannot. Because he's not matured for that kind of weight. There are some things that God has promised you, sir. It is for you. But it can never come to you that is here. Because the faith that you have at the moment cannot carry that size of blessing. Therefore, it becomes imperative that you grow your faith so that what you can receive from God can also grow. When your faith grows, your possibilities in God will grow as well. Are you following? Are you following? Every time God told you something in 2019, you didn't see it. He came in 2020, the same thing he told you, you didn't see it. He told you 2021, you didn't see it. And he told you 2022, you didn't see it. And you say, it's God a liar. Why is he saying the same thing? He said, this year, you will marry. This year, you will carry a baby. This year, but the year is passing. It's because the prophecy is yours. But the faith that you have at the moment is not able to receive what is already yours in the spirit. If your eyes can be open, you will see in the spirit that what God told you four years ago is already there. But to be able to receive it, your faith needs to be worked on. Because no matter how hard we try, I hope you know that airplane cannot land on this road. Eh? Do you think I will play? Airplane, airplane. Do you think I land on this leader's road? No. Because the road is not wide enough for it to land. If an airplane comes here and he wants to land here, by the time he comes down, he will see that he can't land, he's going to crash. It has to go. That is the reason why you see if you go to the airport, the space where the plane lands is a mass of land of no beauty. Because the, the, the plane needs sufficient space. There are some of us that the size of what God has released for you, the space of faith in your heart cannot land it. And so the plane will begin to overrun the air. They begin to overrun the air. They say, Pilot of land, he said, if I land, I'm going to crash. They should create more space so that I can land properly. Let them create more space. Some of you that will like that for the past two years, God has been saying, walk on your faith so that this thing that has been on your head can land. This thing needs to land. Everywhere you go, they are giving you the same prophecy. You are a great man. You are a great woman. And you say, where will, where will I become great? The thing is like a plane looking for land this space. But the landing part is your faith. Therefore, to grow your faith is to grow your life. To grow your faith is to grow your results. To grow your faith is to grow your evidence. Listen now, I'm going to keep singing this thing until everybody in this ministry will get it. Because the reason is because one day you will wake up and realize that you have not, when you think that you have been waiting for God, you will now realize that you have not been the one waiting for God. It has been God that has been waiting for you. God has been ready to change your life. But you have not been prepared to be able to receive the change. Therefore, Jesus said, Pay it unto you according to your word. According to your faith. It can't be better than your faith. It can't be better than your faith. Be it unto you according to your faith. Not according to my faith, because faith is personal. 
You can't drive your car with my headlights. What are you talking about? We're not going to the same direction. The moment I divert, you have entered darkness. Every man must possess his own personal faith. Now, you better listen to me this morning. And I'm not just speaking to me because I'm speaking to the body of Christ. Every man must possess his own personal faith. Whatever your faith cannot keep, you will lose it. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. I've given you the definition of faith before. I'm going to repeat it again for the purpose of emphasis. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 verse 1. He said, Our faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And what did I tell you is faith? I said faith is a combination of three things. Number one, trust. Number two, hope. Number three, the word of God. Is that what I taught you? That whenever you have a hope and you receive the word of God and you trust that word, that is what? Faith. Whenever you have a hope for something, I'm trusting God for healing. And then the word of God comes, you shall be healed. You receive that word and trust on that word. That is faith. So for faith to be complete, there has to be a word from God. There has to be trust in that word. And then you have to hope that that word will work in your life. It is the hope of receiving an expectation because you trust the word of God. Because you trust the word of God. And that is the reason why I told those that were around on Tuesday, I said, you can't have faith. Please pay attention now. You can't have faith, I mean faith that will produce results, if that faith is not standing on the word of God. No. The only source of faith is the word of God. He said, now faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The only source of faith is the word of God. That means that as you are sitting down now, you have an opportunity for your faith to grow. Are you, I get what I'm saying. Somebody say, man of God, you say I need to increase my faith. So where do I increase it? That's what you are doing now. If you listen to the word of God that is coming to you now, this word that I'm preaching is the raw material. It's the food that will grow your faith. Faith can only come from the word of God. Anytime you hear the word of God, anytime you receive the word of God, it has an effect on your faith. That is the only source. Any other confidence that is not based on the word of God is not faith. It can be anything, but it's not faith. Faith must be standing on God's word. Hallelujah. Come stand there. Now, you know that there's something they call water dispenser. I, I used to see that a lot in banks. They, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a small bottle, it's like a round bottle. And then it has a tap at the bottom. You can just take plastic disposable cups and open the water and then you can get water to drink. Do you know what, what I'm talking about? Eh? Some of them have cold, cold one also, that you can get cold one. Do you know that when you are fetching from that water dispenser, by the time 50 customers queue to fish, by the time the 50th person have finished fishing, what do you think will happen to that water? If they are not careful, they do not even get to the last person because of the size of the container. Yet, it's water we are fetching, but that source, it has a limit. Eh? Anything that you make the source of your faith, one day it will fail you because it has a limit, including man. There is an extent man will help you we say, I'm not, I'm not coming again. Eh? 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 Somebody for sick and goes to the hospital. There is an extent man will gather around you. After six months, one day you, you, you will just come and say, Brother, I have tried to. I have sat down on this bed with you for six months. I need to live my own life. You will leave you there. You have to look for somebody that will come and replace you. Only the word of God has the ability that no matter how much you draw from it, it will not be ended. 
That is the reason why the word of God is the source of faith. Am, am I making sense? The reason why the word of God is the source of faith is because only the word of God. People of God, do you know how many billions Christians all over the world are in church right now? Billions. Every one of us will be asking the same time, Father, I need your answer. Only God can answer out two billion people at the same time. If you know of any human being that can answer five people at once, let me know. Five. You are a parent here, you have five children, five of them asking for one. Mommy, give me this one. Mommy, give me this one. Mommy, give me this one. All of you, give me that. Come on, our mothers here. Are you, are, you, are you my witness here? All of you, come on. You have to confuse me. Get out. Only Jehovah has the capacity of receiving one billion prayer. And go see the last. Answer, 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 answer. This is the reason why faith has to be built on God. Because only God has the capacity of meeting all your needs. If you see any man on this side that can tell you I will meet all your needs, you have met a liar. Because no man can meet all your needs. Every man can only meet your need based on what he has. Hello now. By the time he has finished giving you what he has, he will tell you, I have tried my best. Holy God has the ability of meeting all your needs. And the vehicle that God uses to meet all your needs is called the word of God. It's called the what? The word of God. Therefore, this is why your faith must be built on the word of God. Now, I want to do a little work this morning and I, I really need you to pay attention will you pay attention now i really need you to pay attention i, I need hi let me get let me start by getting four people first let me have four people bring those materials for me i really need you to pay attention please i'm going to need more people but let me have four photos or ushers first come we are going to see. I want you to pay attention. We are going to work some things this morning. I really need you to pay attention. Hallelujah. Okay. We are going to see how we can work this. You take this. You take this. You take this. You take this. Okay. We are going to need more person, but let's let's begin with this one first. I'd like you to pay attention. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I, this responsibility God has given me is not just a responsibility to this church. It's a responsibility to the body of Christ. That we have a proper understanding on the subject matter of faith. I want you to look, please, display your card, please. Display your card. Go, go. Now, look up. Look up. You come. You may come. Two of you over there. Look at this. Okay, two of you, stand, stand over there. Good. Now look at this. Is there anybody in this service that does not have this thing? Everybody has this one, alright? A brain. Huh? A brain. I, I, I think you all have brain. Even a madman has brain. But just that sense I've left the brain. Do you understand what I'm saying? A madman does not lose his brain. He only loses his mind. Right? Because the brain is a physical mass that if they should use surgical equipment to open this head now the first thing they will see is your brain eh? white is substance like pop right all right now the same thing with this everybody has this if you don't have this you are dead because this is what pumps your blood it's called your heart everyone has the heart now these two things are very important organs now if we are going to understand the subject of faith that we're going to be working with this year you need to understand what I want to teach you this one. If not, most of the things I will teach this year do not make sense. Because this is I want to teach you. This is the strength of the devil against believers. And this can also be your strength against him. Now, in every human brain, there is a system. The brain can be seen. The brain can be touched. They can touch your brain. If they open this head, they will touch the brain. There is a system operating in that brain which cannot be seen by men. That system is called mind. Everybody say mind. Yes, say my mind. You know, they use your mind. Use your mind. Use your mind. Okay, what a madman lost is his mind. He lost the control of his mind. Now, inside this, your heart, shift a little so that you don't cover the screen. 
inside this your heart shift a little over here there is also a system in this your heart just as the mind is in the brain there is also a system in your heart which is called the spirit so the spirit of a man is in the heart just as the mind of a man is in the brain are you following me this is the reason why most times in the bible the bible uses heart and spirit to replace each other as if it were that both of them were the same but the concept is that your heart is a physical organ your spirit is in your heart so most time when the bible talk about the heart what is that talking about is your spirit and also we have a physical object of organ which is the brain and then there is the mind look at ezekiel 32 26 let me show you something ezekiel 32 verse 26 ezekiel 32 verse 26 okay ezekiel 32 26 can we get that ezekiel that's not what i want that's not what i want that's not what i want go go back go to verse 19 let me see that's not what i want go to verse 9 just move back to verse 19 no that's not what i am looking for okay all right so maybe media you help me look for it help me look for the scripture it's, it should be either maybe 30, 30 or 32 you just help me search for it when god was speaking he said i will give them a new heart and i will put my spirit inside of them god was speaking maybe somebody can help me look for that i will give them he said i will give them a new heart and then my spirit i will give them a new spirit it was a prophecy of the the new birth all right ezekiel 36 please thank you father ezekiel 36 verse 26 give me ezekiel 36 26 ezekiel 36 26 he said a new act also will i give you and a new spirit will i put within you and i will take away this stony art out of your flesh and I will give you an art of flesh. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. He said, a new heart will I give you. And a new spirit. Are you, are you with me now? Are you with me, church? He said, God said, when you become born again, what I do is, I give you good. He said, a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit. He said, when you become born again, what I do is to give you a new heart. I take away the heart of stone. That heart that no matter what happens, you don't feel anything. You can see without feeling anything. He said, I give you a new heart, and then I will give you a new spirit within it. Look at it now. He said, I will give you a new heart, and I will give you a new spirit. I will put a new spirit within it. So, your heart is the house of your spirit. And then, your brain is the house of your mind. Are you still here? Are you still here? all right now this is very very important i want you to stay behind you heart stay behind the spirit spirit come forward now look at this look at this with your mind as a believer god gave you the gift of mind so that you can be able to enjoy physical education you learn with your mind when you go to school you develop your mind your mind is very very important when it comes to your physical existence with men but you must understand that the moment we come to the subject of faith your mind becomes irrelevant faith is a spiritual force by the time i'm done this morning you realize why many christians cannot believe the word of god you will realize i don't think that i'm wasting your time i'm taking this effort because i really want you to get this and i really want you to be blessed
when it comes to faith this is the business here but let's look at the mind a little bit the mind of a man is built on logic everybody say logic logic that is sense it must make sense if somebody is talking to you and what he say makes sense what will your brain be doing your head be doing you'll be not doing your head to say you are right eh? it makes sense but when somebody says something that does not make sense you don't i'm trying to let you know that there are some things that god will say that this man here will nod his head and say no because it does not make sense to him yes for example if you are sarah and god comes to you and said at the age of 89 you become pregnant what will your mind say because according to common sense 89 year old woman is planning for death not baby oh you don't want me to preach this one an 89 year old woman baby is not part of her prayer point because biologically speaking all the cells and the equipment in the system of the woman to carry a baby is dead so therefore when god says 89 year old woman will become pregnant this one will reject it the only part of the person that can accept it is where the spirit i'm going to show you this money up to break this two down so that you can be able to really have faith this year because if you are not careful your mind will rob you from your prophecy in the book of um, 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 second king chapter 7 verse 1 for example elisha said to the king he said there is famine in the land but by this time tomorrow there will be an abundance the man that heard that prophecy that within 24 hours family will turn to abundance his mind could not accept it people of god how many things do i say on this altar that i call prophecy from god that your mind does not accept if we are sincere there are many especially because this is a church that the pastor is a prophet there are many things that i say to people you may not want to agree with me because so you say you don't want anybody to accept you say, no no but there are many things i say on this altar even some of the things i said last week sunday about the new year there are members of this church that have nodded their head and say <laughs> they cannot ah, 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 ah. the problem is that they are trying to receive the word of god with their words with their mind and they can't walk because your mind is not designed It will fight it because your mind is built on logic the, your mind say if it makes sense to me i go accept them if you don't make sense to me i'm not accept it's built on logic your mind is built on common sense come on now let's use our let's use our brain come on let's use our brain I gave a prophetic word one day in a program on campus and I said to the students, I said, don't see the Lord, when you get home, anything that's not working in your house that's an electronics, go and use it to do work. A boy, Sylvester, went home. His television has been abandoned for months. The thing is point. He does not have money to repair it, so he decided to leave the television here because as a student, he could not. When he got home, he just walked to the television and said, Pastor said, any electronics that's not working. We should go and use it. He walked straight to the television, plugged it to the socket on television. The television came on and began to work. When he came to the, to share the testimony in the program and said, See my TV, it was not working. His roommates were behind me with and said, You know they work. We know, you know they work. The TV began to work. People were looking like ah, ah, television. Ah, God they repair television. God now repair. You see, that part of them that is asking that question is what? If you are a Christian that you live by the mind, the word that the Bible used to classify that kind of Christian is a Christian of the flesh or carnal Christian. That's a Christian whose life is guided by the mind. If you are like that, look up now. If you are like that, I can assure you, Christianity will not do you many good. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, Christianity will not do you. You will be a Christian for 20 years. You will not really have many miracles to show. It won't do you many good. Because the things of God can never be received by the mind. So the mind is ruled by common sense. So when you hear somebody say, look at this now. Look at this. I come now as a motivational speaker. Ha! Others in your family have not been able to make it. But you, you must come out to make it. 
if the, if 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 Martin Luther King can do it, you too can do it. I'm a motivational speaker and I'm talking to you. You too can do it. Say I too can do it. Say, I too can do it. I too can do it. Say I too can do it. I too can do it. Say ah ah. Now go and do it. All I have done is to charge your mind. That thing that you walk away with is not faith. Because it's not the word of God that created that effect. It was mere motivational speaking. For it to be faith, the root of that thing that is moving you must be what? The word of God. If the thing that is moving you is not the word of God, it's because you saw one motivational speaker. This is easy. I, I mean, I used to be there before. I know what I'm talking about. I used to be there before. I used to go from schools to schools, campus to campus to talk to students, motivate them. I can assure you that the best we do is to give you relief in your mind. To travel to this point, sir, no, is beyond motivation. This is the reason why many people, you say, Pastor, but Daddy, I'm a man of faith. I'm a woman of faith. Why do you call yourself a man of faith? Because, I mean, because, why do you call yourself a man of faith? Why? Because I can never be poor in life. Why will you not be poor? Why will I not be poor? Say yes. Ah, why will I not? Why, why will I be poor? Mm -mm, that's not an answer. Why will you not be poor? Why do, okay, why will I be poor? No, why do you say you will not be poor? Not to investigate if what you are saying is faith. Why will you not be poor? Uh, because after I have an hand work now. No, you see that thing you are saying is not faith. When one witch from somewhere wake up and then open a fire and the fire is carrying your name and says it's not time for them to face you, you become crippled. And then your hand work will become useless. You know, many Christians do not know that the reason why we need faith is not just because of blessing, it's just so, it's so that the day Satan decided to branch your house. <laughs> I hope you know that every one of us, if there's a day Satan will branch our house. That he has not come yet does not mean we will not come home. One day, we will be passing your street. Hey, I never reach this house for two months, so we enter. If that day that he enter, you have not understood what I'm teaching you, my God, you will not become a victim of oppression. So you you we cannot come and say ah, I cannot daddy I cannot die before my time. Why will you not die before your time? Why will I not? Why will I, will I die? Why will you not die before your time? Uh, I mean I mean my family we live old. Even my great grandmother is still alive. My brother, you see, one day you will be going to one village, and you will now meet some people on the way that will release three bullets. And when the bullet enter you. You will know that your family old age will not be able to survive bullets. But they say, why will you not die before your time? He say, because it's not my heritage as a believer. The Bible says, I will not die or live. He said, will long life will satisfy me? Now what you are saying is what? Faith. Because the reason why you are saying what you are saying is because of what God has said. Therefore, two people can be saying the same thing, but one is speaking faith, the other one is speaking English. So we don't judge men of faith based on what they say. We have to know why they are saying what they are saying. Am I making some sense? My business cannot go down. Hallelujah. Why will it not go down? And after I do, because you say I don't stock the business. It will, <laughs> just pray that I will not visit you in the year. Or just pray that somebody that they now gave money somewhere and say go and look for any business that is doing well and drop this money to buy goods so that as you drop the money everything that they are selling will be siphoning spiritually into your account just pray that you not be your shop the person will not mistakenly enter as you collect that one thousand naira, your business will not enter minus minus my, strangely mysteriously you'll be selling but you can't see the money because you were not operating by faith Though you were saying my business cannot go down, but why were you saying that? Therefore, it is important that everything we say must have a root in the word of God. Am I making some sense now? All right, now look at this. On the other hand, when you look at your spirit, when you look at your spirit, what is your spirit? Please look up now. Your spirit can. Give us 2 Corinthians 1 verse 22. Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? Look at this. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 22. 
I want to talk to you a little bit on, on your spirit. Look up. Look up. Now, help me to complete this scripture. Greater is he that is in me. Uh -huh. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in what? How many of you know that God is in you? Let me see your hands. You know God is in you. I carry God. Hallelujah. You carry God, right? Huh? Where is God in you? If we want to look for God in you, we are going to find Him. Give me that scripture back, please. I want to do it. I want to do some work now this morning. Where is God in you? Now, the, the, your spirit is the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. See, after me say, my spirit is the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. If they want to look for the Holy Ghost in you, like you say, you carry it in your spirit. Look at it. He said, God has seed us and given us the earnest of the spirit, capital letter S, which is the Holy Spirit, in our hearts. He said, he has given, he has seed us and given us the earnest of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Give us Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. Thank you, Lord. He said, because you are sons. He said, the day you became born again, because you are sons, God sent forth his spirit, capital letter spirit, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of his son, into your words, heart, crying, Abba, Father. So every one of us here this morning, if you are born again, in your heart, where your spirit dwells, that is where the Holy Ghost resides. Follow me now. Remember, your mind is a place of logic, common sense. But your spirit is sacred. And this is the reason why no Christian can be possessed by an evil spirit in the spirit. A Christian can be oppressed. Oppression is from outside. But a Christian cannot be possessed with an evil spirit. Because in this spirit that he has... The Holy Spirit that is able to stay there when you become born again is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and an evil spirit cannot share one house. So a Christian can be oppressed in his body, which is sickness. A Christian can be oppressed in things around him, which is business, marriage. But to say a Christian is possessed, that his spirit is living inside a Christian, is biblical impossible. Because the moment you became born again, we saw it in Ezekiel. I said, We take it, give you a new spirit. The moment you became born again, the Holy Ghost came to live inside of your spirit. So, what is now the difference between this and this? This man is ruled by common sense, logic, but this man is ruled by the ways of God. And that's the reason why those that listen to their spirit, they don't make a mistake. But if you listen to your mind, it will put you into trouble. Yeah. Can I go deeper now? Can I go deeper? Hi. It will take a lot of work, but if you follow what I'm teaching you this year, you will get it right. Because, look at this. When God speaks to you, everybody say, when God speaks to me. Now this is God. He has come to speak to you. Maybe he came to speak to you. To you. I want to speak to my daughter, Caroline. God will see your mind. God will never speak to your mind. He walks straight to your spirit. And he speaks to your spirit by the Holy Spirit. Only God can speak directly to your spirit. But when Satan speaks to you, he speaks to your mind because the only way Satan can work against you is through your mind because your mind is ruled by common sense. And Satan is the king of common sense. Come on now. Come on now. I don't say just one prayer. Cancer will just die like that. Use your brain now. He wants to rob you of your miracle. But he can't come to your spirit to say, come on now. It cannot work. Because this spirit is too tired, too taught in the ways of God. 
somebody ask me one time, say, how do you differentiate the voice of God and the voice of the devil? This, I've taught you now. Satan speaks to my mind. But God speaks to my spirit. Please follow me. Now, when I am preaching, I'm preaching now. Or, you take your Bible. Remember, faith comes from where? The Word of God, right? Let's assume that you take your Bible and you are reading. You read with your mind. Eh? Eh? No weapon from against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. No weapon, no weapon, fashion. No weapon. You will tread upon serpents and scorpion. Your mind is saying, ah, you will tread upon serpent, scorpion. And it will not hurt you. Snake. <laughs> Come on now. That's where the mind reacts. You will mash snake, it will not go bite you. Scorpion. He said, you will drink deadly things, it will not kill you. Ah, you will drink poison. Ah, my brother, you know me? This did not make sense. The moment you are reading the Bible and you read the word of God, and you read the word of God, can I get two more persons? Come, yes, come. The two sisters come. Yes, come. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. That's yours. This is yours. Now, you keep yours first. Come, come to this side. The moment the word of God, you are reading the word of God, and the word of God, you are reading it with your mind. Your mind say, ah, ah. No, 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 no. If I drink that it will not work. No. It's not possible. Papa. Let's think now. Who will drink poison? You know, kill him. That thing you just read has become information. It has become what? And information is powerless. It is spiritual. But when you read that word of God, and you say, hey, so that means that nobody can kill me. Hey! Open yours. That means nobody can kill me, no matter what they plan against me. What you have just done now is that you have believed that word. The moment you believe the word of God, what belief does is to take the word of God that you have believed in your mind and move that word to your spirit. When that word comes to your spirit, it becomes faith. Are you following me? Any word of God that you hear or you read that you do not believe cannot be converted to faith. Once you read it and you believe it, belief therefore is what moves the word of God from your mind to your spirit. And until it gets to your spirit, it can never become faith. This is the reason why you can quote Isaiah 53 verse 5 By strife I am hid But yet you will be sick Because it's not yet faith You can quote it But it has not been believed By your mind The moment you believe it It moves to your spirit It moves straight to your spirit And this is where faith works And can I shock you you set and knock at your door. It will be a very big mistake for you to send this man to go answer the devil. It will frustrate your destiny. It must be this man that will answer the devil. Only your spirit can withstand the devil. Because that's where the Holy Ghost is. You can't use your mind to challenge the devil. Hmm, Satan, hmm, you don't know me. Oh. You don't know me. Oh. <laughs> you don't know me. Oh. When I when I did school, they call me Egbe Wager. You will realize that the weakest spirit is greater than the strongest man. He will make an example of you. So I can preach for three hours. And you will never get faith. Never. You hear the word of God for three hours. Faith will not come. Because every word you are hearing as I'm preaching now, you have refused. member of this ministry will die. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. It's, it can never move to your spirit. It will be your head. So now you are you are in the bus going, and when the one of the tire of the bus just flew out, which are, the first thing that came out from your mouth is it won't help. Which is the real state of your heart? It won't help. You're not going to be bad. God or prophet or no man. As if it's magic. Yes, the God or prophet or no man. Your work is to believe. I wish I can get somebody in that media that can help me look for that scripture. I, I don't have time, I would have looked for it. When they asked Jesus, they said, what is the work of God? Jesus said, the work of God is to believe. Your work, your work as a believer, your biggest work is to believe. This work is more important than prayer and fasting. Because prayer and fasting without belief is a waste. Your work is to believe. I, I need, can you look for that scripture for me, yes, sir? sir? Your work is to they ask you, they say, What is the work? What is the how do we do the work of God? He said, Your work, the work of God is this to believe in the one who God has sent. So when God says giants are rising in the next one year, do you believe that you are one of them? John 6, give us media. John 6 29. When God says giants are rising, do you believe? It will amaze you the kind of words that God speaks as prophecy. People just shake their head and say, hmm. <laughs> What? What? Anytime I see members of the any member of this ministry who is going through satanic attacks, I feel like someone bleeding. How <laughs> was this? You are a member of this church? Sir, if you are in this church and you don't have faith, something is wrong with you. Because this is what I teach. And the problem why you do not have faith is because the world only ends here. You never allow belief to enter it to move it. Hallelujah. So, he said, it comes. Let's do a quick vision now. Satan speaks to what part? Huh? God speaks to what part? So Satan comes here. Yeah. Hmm. You, you will just die or you won't see the new year. You will hear the voice in your spirit say, no, it's not possible. I cannot die before my time. Have you not noticed anything like that in your life before? That two voices come against each other at the same time. Yes. One is coming from your mind. Another is coming from your spirit. So your spirit is replying him. No! So the greatest battle of faith is between these two men your mind and your spirit your spirit is saying my life will get better your mind is saying look at the economy of this country your spirit is saying one thing your mind is saying another thing this morning somebody is getting deliverance already yes yes he it said it's somebody is getting deliverance already dare you doubt the almighty ah! you doubt the almighty go and read your bible and discover people that doubted the what happened to them when zechariah the priest doubted the angel he didn't doubt god he doubted the angel the angel said how dare you doubt me angel angel gabriel stand before you doubt me say you become a dumb man from today how dare you doubt the almighty god how dare you god say you are going to get married you are still asking how will i marry how dare you? How dare this is the reason why I can't walk? Oh Lord, do it in my life so that they will know that you are God. God said, I don't live, I don't do anything to prove any point to anybody. God won't prove any point. Father, do it so that they will know. God said, No, believe, and it will happen. My job is not to prove a point to anybody. I'm too big to prove a point. I can lie and prove a point to that. So let me run now, uh, so that they will know I'm a lion. It's a fake lion. It's a fake lion. How dare you doubt you? Oh God, help me never to doubt you. How dare you?
what? The reason is because we have learned to listen to our mind instead of listening to our spirit. Ha! So what do you do as a believer? Control your mind. What did I say? There are things that come into your mind. Reject it. Do you know that I used to have that challenge when I was, when I became born again newly? I struggled like that for almost six or seven years before God. When I'm praying like this, as I just begin to, I used to, I, I, empty today, you know, I, I pray very violently. I will just be like this. Father, Shaparato, you will help me. All of a sudden, I will just, it will look as if I'm the one thinking. Remember, oh, remember, I say, last week you offered God. Have mercy on him. Even though I have already asked for mercy last week and I've repented, I will not. I have the angel, I will not only back again. Oh God, I thank you for you are God and you are kind. I will just hear, did you will just come because, ah, remember I say this boy cost you yesterday and you, you say, I'm sure that I will deal with you. And you, you, are you, are you, are you going to say? The prayer cannot be straight line. It's always mm, 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 mm. until one day the Lord then spoke to me and he said, Son, I said, Sir. He said, Son, I said, Sir. He said, When you are talking to me, I don't interrupt you. I said, Lord, I thought you are the one judging me when I'm he said, No, 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 no. He said, When you are talking to me, I allow you finish talking before I talk. Is there anyone, anything that interrupts your prayer? Is the devil. Is the devil. The moment the prayer fire want to hit him, he will quickly come. Remember, say, you know, lock the bedroom door before you come up for us. And your neighbor now, if you don't enter your bedroom, he's talking to your mind. It's a distraction. You remember, say, you remember, say, you never pay your rent to your rent now, two weeks in the expire. When the prayer is about to break hell, the only strategy he has is to come quickly to stop you from doing the harm you are doing to him. Remember, oh, remember, oh, this is why sometimes you come to church, instead of you to be hearing the word of God, you'll be thinking of your problem that you left at home. Satan just rob you of the miracle of that day. He came, he came, he came. You came. I don't think that you say, ah, but ah, do you mean, Papa, that said that can enter into the church, sir? The realm of the mind is not physical. That's the reason why you can be here. Your mind can go to your house, but your body is here. Your mind will be in your house, cooking the food that you left halfway, while your body is here. Your duty is to shake it. Build you set up. And then let it that when I'm praying, anytime anything wants to read it, I want me. And it will be, it will be talking, no? I will hear God say, ignore him. I will just ignore him. Sharp up. It will be talking. I come on, Sota. The thing will die. The voice will die. That's how men become strong with God. Are you there? Some years ago, something happened. I went to preach in a church in Ondo State, a place called Ikare Akoko. I was preaching in that program, and when I was preaching, the Lord said to me, Pray for Mrs. Samuel. I've not finished preaching. I nudged the thing. I said, Lord, can I? Um, let me round up the message because I always avoid entering the prophetic while I'm preaching because prophetic is like a river. Once you enter, you can't preach again. Take up your time. I was trying to. He came again. This is Samuel. So I now stood up and I said, Hey, wait, this is an emergency. Emergency. The Lord said I should pray for Mrs. Samuel. Who is Mrs. Samuel? I look at the pastor that invited me, and some people in the back shouted, Yay! I said, What's that? He said, The woman, he just come out. Never preach TV minutes. When he come out, where he go? When I go look for her, they look for the woman, they don't see her. What happened? The moment I got that word, Mrs. Samuel, and I began to say, I want to talk to Mrs. Samuel. Guess who moved first? Satan. 
You remember say your children when you leave for outside, you know you should say your neighbor never, you know your neighbor not gonna forget them. The woman thought she was the one thinking, she didn't know that she was being manipulated. She stood up two minutes before her prophecy. Carry her back. Going home to do an assignment that has no use into her destiny. And while she was going home, she cannot hear. If she could hear, she would have been hearing Satan laughing. Ha 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 ha. How many times the devil mock because our spirit is ignored? If you are sensitive, you will know that anything that's not working in your life today is not the work of God, but the work of the enemy. Is a corny man. Okay, look at the temptation I gave Jesus. Let's look at it. The first temptation I gave Jesus. What did he say? You are hungry. Turn the stone to bread. I mean, save your stomach. Help your stomach now. Are you not hungry? Help your stomach. Satan's temptation must always be according to it. it makes sense to the flesh. Help your stomach. Use of rejected and say, I say yes, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, show, show to everybody that you are a man of power. Jump from here. Thank God. Somebody from this morning, when that voice comes here, shake it off. I say, Satan, no, no. I've caught you. Sir, anyone that can catch the devil in his mind, the devil will never be able to enter your life because he's done to your life. Before he attacked your child, he came to work on your mind first. Yes, he came to attack. Satan hates defeat. He does not go here and know they will defeat him. No, he does not. He does not. I mean, every, every, every bully that we know, you can shoot that. Every Agbero you know, we can see that. There's no Agbero that fight a man that you know can beat him. When he weighed the man's side, see the chest. He said, Toilet! When he sees somebody else and see the leg and leg, he said, Come on, come on, come on. Satan sizes before he attacks. And it is in your mind. Many Christians, they have allowed the devil corrupt their mind. Corrupt their mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you are in church. Imagine you. I wish God can open your eyes. You are in church. The word is coming. Your miracle is about to come. And Satan will quickly come and say, Look right, look right, look right. You will not look right. You will not see bitches. See, remember, say she offended you. Service don't close. As far as heaven is concerned, the alignment for the receiving of that day's blessing, you have been dislocated. It's like an antenna that you have tuned in from 99.7 FM to 99.8. Now, shh, go to bed. You can't receive again. Satan is a master of the mind. And that is the reason why every believer that wants to go to school, you must be very careful that the more you educate your mind, also educate your spirit. Otherwise, there is an extent you educate this your mind. You will say there is no God. Yes, yes. Most intellectual professors, they, you, you educate your mind to an extent. That is the realm of the devil. You educate your mind to an extent. One day you say, forget it, there's no God. We, we, we came from ape. Man moved from ape, ape ev ev evolution. And became, I, mean, really very, I mean, look at it now. Can't you see ape? See man, our nose, our eye. I mean, we, we came from ape. So what do we do in church? You come to church so that we can feed your spirit. People of God, some of you, the next day I will see you is seven days time. Next week Sunday. Some of you, because of your kind of work, you can't come for midweek service. You only come once a week. Do you know therefore that when you come on Sunday like this, which is once a week, do you know therefore that you're supposed to eat enough food in this spirit when I'm preaching that can carry you for the next seven days? Otherwise, by Wednesday, everything you have heard today would have been finished. And then Satan will rule on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and finish you. This is what we are looking for. It only comes from the word of God. That you believe. Do you believe? 
sir? Do you believe? Yes, sir. Oh God, the men and women that we really believe you will rise from this ministry. Sir, we will take over Nigeria. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. We will take over this nation. People will ask, where did they come from? Because men of faith, they move mountains. They do the impossible. They shut the mouth of lions. They turn lions into pets. Daniel looked at the lion and said, Sit down there. We want you. Can you eat me? Sit down there. Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they defy fire. They look at the fire. Our God, do we serve? We save us from you. King, don't do the force of the water. What did happen? Nothing there. Nothing there. Anytime God see faith, God move. Sir, you want to move the hand of God, you are going to have to engage faith. This takes us back to our topic. Faith is a spiritual force. Now, is this does this now make sense to you? That for you to have faith, it must come from here. So faith must be a spiritual force. So I give you four reasons why faith is a spiritual force, and then we are going to really pray this morning. Sir, by the time we are done with this message, and we pray for like 10 minutes, and we then release some prophetic word from God. This time I believe God that you are going to believe them. So that you can enter this one week and what you have not seen from January to date, these seven days you will see them. Because when faith wake up, God will manifest. God will manifest. One time I went to God and said, Father, why is it that members of this ministry, some will call me on phone, some, some will call me very serious issue. Dad, I said, what's the problem? As I'm talking to you right now, all oh, my body is down, I can't raise up my body. I said, no, be healed now. And the next day they will come and say, Daddy, I, mean, I will forget to call you. What you give me pray for me? All my body just became okay. I just started jumping up and down. And some other members of this ministry will call me. Daddy, I'm having issues with my body. I will pray. Two hours later, they will come and say, Daddy, the thing is worse. And I said, Lord, is it not the same prayer? Is it not the same you? But the God told me that when Jesus went to his hometown, he could not do many miracles. Why? I say, because they didn't believe him. So all of you are members of this church, but the way you believe God and believe in his prophet is different. And that difference in your belief is what differentiates the speed of results and the kind of results you get. I won't be surprised if there are members of this ministry that have never gotten a, a big breakthrough since they joined this church. While there are some they are swimming with it every week. And they think it's the devil that is their problem. Sir. The only day the devil becomes your real problem is when you let the devil capture your mind. If you are still in charge of your mind, Satan is not your problem. When you let him capture your mind, you know there are people on this earth that Satan is the one in charge. He's the one that just he just whispers to them, he follows them. Cost that man. You there, Chris? Thank you. Slap this one. Poor! Why you slap me? Now God will punish you. They are controlled by the devil. Why there are some of us that are controlled by the Spirit? Say, Psst, be quiet. Don't answer him. Yes, let go. It is well. Stand up and begin to speak in tongues now. Ah, may people controlled by the Spirit of God rise from this service in the name of Jesus. He said, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the Son. God, please sit down. People that are led by the Spirit of God, not led by the flesh. Satan will never lead me in the name of Jesus. Never. never. It, he will lead you into destruction. But when the Holy Ghost is the one leading your spirit, do like this. Do like this. Do like this. Do like this. Sir, Elisha said to the widow in 2 Kings chapter 4, he said, go and pour that little oil in both in drums. And the oil will not be finished until the drums are filled up. The woman believed the word of God. And it became faith. And she went, oil multiplied. It's not the size of your capital, it's the size of your faith. If your faith is right, that little capital can be multiplied by God. I started with 10 naira, can become 10 billion. When faith is solid, multiplication is normal. 
the woman said, Man of God, I believe. She went back home. Say, My sons, go borrow drum. Mommy, what's happening? Say, No question. Borrow drum, borrow tank, borrow bucket, borrow basin. You don't finish. Collect for Papa Jumbo. Collect, collect. She was engaging and believing that word of the prophet. And when they pack everything, they say, Lock the door. Junior, bring the oil. Mommy, what is happening? Say, Psst. Watch and see the wonders of God. It's not the finish. It's not the finish. It's not the finish. You don't fool say yes. Ah, mommy, this two liter jerry of bottle, I feed up 100 liter jerry can say, no question. That's how some of your life will be this year. People will just be looking and say, ah, what's happening? I mean, in the year 2023, they say, what is happening? Ah, what's happening now? Ah, what's happening? Ah, what's happening? Ah, what's happening? She came to meet us here last week. She has over two course. She, she's the last tenant of the house and she became the first landlord among us. What is happening here? I stand as a prophet or professor. In the last one year, your life will change. Your story will change. Everything about your life will turn around for God. If you shout him, activities, it shall be done for you. Shout it again. Shout it like thunder. Do you believe? Then it will be faith. Sit down. If you believe what I just said under the spirit of God, then it will become faith. That's only what will work. That's only what will work. <laughs> Sir, if I don't believe what I'm teaching you, this man standing here would have been dead. I've been, I've, I mean, I've been poisoned before. Raw poison. Raw, raw, raw. I ate as they gave me the food as I ate it. Wow. It was as if they were using cutlass to be slicing my intestine. Jesus. Nobody was unrolling it. They, they basically just, they just brought the food to kill me. Ah! Who will, who will I read this story to? Ah! Jesus. I was struggling to die. And I said, Lord, what is this? Is this an attack? They say, it's not an attack, my son. It's a poison. You have a poison. Ah! What do I do? Because my spirit has already established that no man can kill me because of the word of God. God did not give me a mandate to do halfway. Sir, no. Wait, wait. When he showed me that I'm going to in this ministry, I have not even got it there. I can't die. No, sir. The messenger of God cannot die with the message. I must deliver my message to my word. Never. What is this? Lord, what do I do? And I heard that voice of the Lord in that minute. He said, command the food to come out and I say you food I command let my stomach reject you I have not finished paper <laughs> I vomited to the last drop of those poison food and when I came out and the person that organized the poison saw me he knew that Jesus is Lord I would have died this is the reason why I say if Satan has not come to your house one day we come home I mean, he has, he has, he has, he has seen women say, My baby, no, my baby, no, no. What you have to It's just a stretch. Before I say, neighbor, it don't die. You feel that person is unfortunate. No, it's not fortunate. It's just that Satan came to that person as quick. One day, also remember your address. Make sure the day you remember your address and knock at your door, make sure you are fatal. Otherwise, you become bushmate. You know, Christians don't want to accept this reality of the truth. That when Satan knock at your door, it's you that will resist him, not God. They say you will resist the devil and he will flee. You will say, Why me, oh God? And you will die and go to heaven. And God will say, You fool, you came too early because you do not know what to do with the day of battle. It is your faith in the day of adversity is become your strength was weak. But when your spirit is filled with faith, you are bullets to answer the devil. Satan, you came to the wrong address. Kapaladaba, who is it that said the thing? And it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded her. For the Lord of the wicked will not rest upon the Lord of the righteous. But my Bible said they will gather in one way. But in several ways, they will. At that point, you have better spiritual incarnation. You have entered the element of your calling as a child of God. You have moved from being just a child of God into becoming a spiritual priest in the spirit realm. When you begin to talk like that, they are hitting the drum in heaven. I shall not die, but live. Angels, they begin to take position. Say, who is calling us?
have to move. After a while, you move to the higher level, and then you go. Make pano kupana, opete pete mana. Tongues begin to lie in the spirit. Opete te pete. All of a sudden, all the enemies that came against you, they carry their load, and they say wrong address. If the devil win against you, it's because you did not do what you're supposed to do when he came. Every believer, there must be a day that the devil will remember you to attack you. You must be ready for it. Am I talking to you? You must be ready. You must be ready. The spirit is not there. The young man left Nigeria, traveled to Italy. The day he landed in Italy, they welcomed him with a dream. When he dreamt in this time, he saw him, he was short naked, naked, with only short naked. They gave him cutlass to be clearing his father's family village, his first day abroad. So he was sleeping in Europe, but clearing in Nigeria. And somebody was there saying, clear away! And he called me and said, my brother, it is hard labor that they have sent us to you. You know, they had a court meeting when you left the village. And they now heard and said, what do we do? This brother has left the country. They now sentence you in the court of darkness to hard labor in that country. I said, you will, you, you will suffer there very well. The suffering will be so much that you will be better to come back to Nigeria. He said, what do I do? That is it. When your spirit is equipped, you will know what to do. You will know what to do. When the devil release the arrow, what did the Bible say? See, when the enemy shall come like a flood, the spirit of God in your spirit will raise up a standard against them. You stand up from touch your dream and you say, Satan, you have made a fatal mistake. I reject it. I rebuke it. I refuse it. In the name of Jesus, because the Bible says in Joshua 1 verse 3, it says, wherever the soul of my feet which tread upon God has given to me, I have entered Italy. I have taken over this land. You be Are you listening to me? You don't collect your possession. No. You possess it. And to possess it is war. Possess. Not collect. Collect is to stretch and possess. You say, give me. Give me. So why is faith a spiritual force? Number one, because faith can only exist in your spirit. Romans 10 from verse 6 to 10. Faith can only exist in your spirit. We're going to be, I'm going to release you in the next five minutes, okay? Let's round up together. You're doing a wonderful job. Faith can only exist in your spirit. Romans chapter 10 from verse 6 to 10. Faith is a spiritual force because faith can only exist in your spirit. Mm. Let's, I, I, I just have to rush with that because I don't think we have much time. Romans chapter 10 from verse 6 to 10. The second reason why faith is a spiritual force is because faith is designed to walk in the spirit realm and have control on the physical realm. All right, all of you can go. Just leave only one person. All of you go. Just one person. You can stay. The rest go. Thank you. Go. All right. Thank you. All right. So you can take this now. Let's let's round up together. Turn it now. Turn it properly. Let's round up together. Are you there? Are you there? Now, why is faith a spiritual for? Because it is designed to walk in the spirit realm. First John chapter five verse four. Can we have that? First John chapter five. Don't stop that, please. It is designed to walk from the spiritual realm into the physical realm give us first john chapter first john chapter 5 verse 4. he said whatsoever is born of god overcomes the world he said when you become born of god he said you overcome the world he said and this is the victory that overcome the world even our faith even our faith even our faith hello 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 can i say this to you look at me church can i can i talk can I talk to you, Miracle City? Can I talk to you? If you will control this physical world, hi. Let me let me share a true life story with you. It may sound funny to some of you. I used to have one cousin who was in our village then when we were young. Then the, world, the civilization was not that has not gone to my Matana village then. She came to visit us in Benin for the first time. I live in the village. When the girl came, when we were about to sleep, my mom told her, said, hey, go and off the lights. You won't believe what the girl did. She was looking at the bulb. Those yellow bulb. Off the light. Okay. <laughs> I lie not under God. 
she was so used to the lanterns in the village that she thought this red yellow something was also an advanced kind of lantern not knowing that this type you don't off it with wind you off it with switch Just follow me faith listen hi oh god give this boy understanding let them understand what i'm about to say sir if the only weapon you have a physical weapon you will discover that you, you will want your life to go this direction but you discover your life will go into another direction because the spiritual world is what controls the physical sir i'd rather be weak physically and strong spiritually than to be strong physically and weak otherwise a six-year-old boy will put your destiny inside coke bottle and you will begin to suffer in the world of men please listen please listen please listen faith is the only weapon that god has given to us that we can use to control the physical from the spiritual and what is the advantage of witches and wizards they can control physical things from the spirit realm. what's the work why do people go to me native daughter is it not to control physical things from spiritual world talk to me now that's all that's all that's all they to use spiritual weapons to control physical things one of our brother called me sometime last year he called me off he said that he said yeah they just sacked me from my office and he was almost crying i said why he said, this is what he happened they sack you say yes i heard it in my spirit that that sack was not the will of god so i told him i said they can't sack you he said that they sack me i said they cannot sack you well i agree no phone I said, Daddy, they have sacked, they have sacked me. I said, they cannot sack you. He said, Amen. I said, now, tomorrow morning, your girl will call you, you go and visit your papa. Ah, ah. He was like, <laughs> like, is it that papa have my girl number that I want to call him a bed? I said, no. He said, they will call you. Bye bye. I called the phone. Then I went outside. I spoke it off for like 20 minutes first. Sakaba, Shadaba, Sadaba, Nadaba, Shinepe. Remember, he has already called people to beg your God. Your God said, I won't listen to beg. That, listen, when you understand what I'm teaching, you will know that there is no man you cannot bend. You will close your mouth and leave them. You will bend them. They will come and beg. I first spent 20 minutes first in tongue. When I finish, then I, and I begin to pray. Wherever you are, begin to remember this. Think of him now. Begin to think of all the good things he has done for you since he has been with you. And call him! And he called me the first thing the next day. He said, my God, you called me. I should come and visit your back. I said, of course, he must come. I changed this out in the spirit. Sir, if our Christianity cannot change physical things from the spirit realm, we don't really know what we are doing. A young brother was sharing a story. He's an electrician. He went to the house of one of these politicians. I won't call the name. And when he got there, the politician said, the... So, so when you go to my very big mansion, so when you go to the back side, the fourth room, enter, that is where you will see the things that you need to repair. And the boy mistake the calculation of the rooms. And he mistake it and then open another room that you're not supposed to open. When you open that room, you saw blood, raw blood on the floor everywhere. You see, Jesus, he quickly closed the room and went to the other room. And he says, sir, raw blood. Yes. That's why the next morning that politician will walk to the governor's office and say, Your Excellency, this contract of 50 million, 50 billion, uh, I'm the one that you should give it to. And the other thing will say, I, I have planned to give my brother before, my blood brother, but what? Take it. Yes, Excellency thinks he's signing meat with common, with normal head. He didn't know that the man that came to make a request, he has already done some wicked sacrifices. Sir. You as a Christian that you are going to fight for contract with a man like that, and you are going to that contract table with fufu and a goosey soup. You wake up in the morning, you eat fufu and a goosey soup. You are going to ask for a contract, and a man who has filled one room with blood comes to ask for the same contract. That's when you will know that there is a way darkness can be so dark that even the light will be confused. And then you go say, Daddy, they gave it to unbeliever. They gave it to unbeliever. Me, that is a me believer. Did you control it in the spirit before you went there? 
You thought you were going with quotation, sir. Keep that quotation. First bet 20 minutes first, sir. Kuma kata. Everyone that will read this quotation, they will like it. God will open their heart. Sir, if we don't use the weapon God has given to us, what is not the use of the weapon? I've been looking for a job with my CV for seven years. Nobody accept me. Have you cooked that CV? Did you cook it? You know, it's interesting. A young lady say, there's a man that I'm trying to marry. He is a brother in UK. We have not seen before. He just came to Nigeria. And I need to see his family's house. The family says she will come so that we will see for the first time. Daddy, <laughs> you, no, you, see, you are saying, what you are trying to say is that if I go now, if the family like me, we will be married. If the family does not like me, and you wake up that day, the first thing you think of is pancake. <laughs> Shamalada. You lack understanding. You, sh you, you should keep that pancake aside, keep that makeup mascara affair, and be one play, Mokoma, the grace that came upon Esther, that made the king not to reject her. Oh, but don't make them to ash. When you are finished moving this in the spirit, now put pancake as an added advantage and enter there. When you enter into that, and those that have already been in the house that they are waiting for fault, God will send them on assignment before you get there. They will just receive phone call. Brother, I want to read somewhere. Before I go, come back. You don't come, you don't go. This is what I pray for all our people that do wedding here. Yeah. When they are going for a bride price, I pray that if they remember, they will not pray for everybody. I say, when you are going for this bride price as a man, the person in that family that will cause trouble, God will send them on assignments when you are going. So, because, so that you won't meet them here, so that they will not cause wala. I say, no, 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 no. This man will not. Oh, go with some of them. That day, they go forget their bush meat for bush. Before they go bush, they will look for the bush me rats don't carry and far. They go to trace them. They, they go to trace them another village. Finally, they go see the bush meat. When they, they come back, they don't share the grace. Can I pray a prayer for you? Anyone that will speak against you in the day of your open door, go and send them on assignment. Go and send them on assignment. Go and send them on assignment. Sit down. Can I, can, am I talking to somebody here? Control the physical from the spiritual. Hey! Shamala balaba la balaba. You will discover that. You, oh my God. I wish I had time this morning. I will keep that in next week Sunday. I, I see people in this land that are blue and say, Man of God. Uh, 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 uh. I will frustrate. I will frustrate you. Allah. The next day they come back to apologize. Daddy, I'm sorry, sir. They think they changed their mind. They didn't know that I changed their mind. Kalako Musa to Kapalataya. Ikupate matuma pashante. I think there's one time I a miracle happened with your husband's car. I some years ago. Eh? That I came to pray for it at General Oil, right? Right? One time, some years ago, right? That she, she came to read me one time. She said, I was my car. The engine is the engine that was always knock, 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 something like that. Eh? The NG do knock, 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 knock. Ha! She came to me and said, what's happening? I said, no, let's go and talk to that NG. The car was never started. When I went there, I prayed. What happened to the car? Did it start? It started. The man was, the other man was even surprised. He said, this car not a not a race. Oh. I went and said, in the name of Jesus, you must walk now, 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 now. The I said, okay, start, I start, I mean, boom, 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 boom. Ah. Eh? Eh? So what are you talking about? You control the physical. From the spiritual, from today, things will not be spoiled in your hand. The devil will not spoil this in your family. The devil will not put this in your life. Shout the Lord the same. Sit down. We're about to pray. Why is faith a spiritual force? Because you can. It's only with your faith you can fight on sea forces. Ephesians 6 verse 16. You can only fight on sea forces with your faith. Everybody say on sea forces. I can't hear you say on sin forces. Ephesians 6 verse 16. I've showed you this story before I went to a primary school. Some, some years, some years ago, that should be 2014. I went to do a crusade in a place in Oromion side. And the crusade was so massive. Also. Very massive crusade. Wickedness was exposed. A day later, I carry my little nephew to the primary school to register for primary school there. When I got there, those small, small witch guests that were at within the crusade. I never knew that that was the school they were going to. 
So when I got there and I saw them, they now started doing. They were pointing me for one cup, saying that like it's the pastor that came here two days ago to come and disgrace us. You know, and they were just pointing like that. I didn't even take it serious. People of God, it has not been up to four minutes. I just felt something moving on the ground. Ah, what's happening? The thing just entered his leg and started climbing my leg. We did that one minute. I said, oh, what's this? The Lord said, stroke, stroke, stroke. They sent stroke to me. Ah. Name of Jesus. Dash. I, I felt the thing move back. Phew. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Give us, give us, give us. Ephesians 6 verse 16. He said, it is the sheet of faith. You'll be able to withstand the fiery darts of the wicked. When Satan release attack, he said, it is your faith you are going to, to say, not me. Are you listening to what I'm saying? When he attack you, when he attack your child, is your faith that you want to say, not me. Not me. Not me. Otherwise, you just put your two hands on your head. They really prepare for me that day. I would have left the school like this. Master, what happened? My brother, wait till, wait till I go talk. You know these things may look funny. It's because Satan has not visited you yet. The day Satan visits, we remember your address. Make sure you are ready. He says it's like a raving lion looking for anybody that tells you, No God, don't know the devil, he wants to kill you. Every believer must know both God and know the devil. Eh? You can't enter into war without knowing your enemy. Are you not dead? You don't know your enemy. Is that not the reason why Nigeria is having issue combating these people? Because it's guerrilla war. The people you are you are wearing uniform, they don't wear uniform. So they can be walking like normal citizens. The next year you have on your head. Un unknown enemy is the most dangerous enemy on earth. So you must know your enemy. And finally, faith is the key to the supernatural. Mark chapter 9, 23. Mark 9, 23, we're about to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark 9. He said, Jesus said, if you can believe. What will happen if you can believe? Come on, talk to me. Oh! Everybody say all things. Everybody say all things. Stand on your feet and say all things. Stand on your feet and say all things. Excuse me. Excuse me. Look up. Please, you may stand your way pray now. Look at me, please. I thought it's only with God that all things are possible. But Jesus said, no, it's not only with God. For a man. Give us that scripture back. He said, for a man or woman of faith. He said, not only with God, all things are possible. He said, with you also. All things are possible. Can I ask you this morning, therefore? What is that thing you want to change in your situation? What is that thing you want to change in your marriage? What is that thing you want to bring back to life? Look up everybody. What is that thing that the devil is manipulating? Some of you, you are already angry in your spirit because Satan has played some games around you. You're using you like a, like a child's like child play. You go to your business in the morning, you come back. After working money, dinner, you come back with 500 naira. You say, no customer. Satan is playing game with your business. But you can change it this morning. I'm going to give you five minutes to release your faith. Whatever is the area of your life you want to change this. Can we change physical things from the spiritual this morning? Thank you. Can we, can we do that together this morning? I want us to change physical things from the spiritual realm. 